Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Backing Up vCenter with Veeam Backup and VSS. In this lesson, I'll start off by covering the problem, which is why vCenter requires a special backup with VSS. From there, I'll show you the solution, which is to create a special job for vCenter, and I'll show you how to do it step by step. Then I'll cover the issues with vMotion and DRS related to vCenter. And with that, let's get started. All right, so what's the problem? Why can't we just include the vCenter virtual machine, assuming you're running vCenter as a virtual machine, why can't we include it in our normal backup with Veeam Backup? And the reason is that very likely you pointed your Veeam Backup console to the vCenter server. I mean, that's the recommended way to do it if you're using vCenter. That's the easiest way because Veeam Backup needs to know about vCenter and it needs to know about your virtual infrastructure through vCenter. But if you try to back up the vCenter virtual machine using VSS or Microsoft's Volume Shadow Services, it's going to give you a backup that has application integrity, specifically the SQL Server, very likely that you're running underneath the vCenter virtual machine. Note that you could be running SQL Server separately in another virtual machine, or let's hope not, but a physical server. So again, we're making a number of assumptions here. You're running vCenter as a virtual machine with SQL Express installed locally, you want to back it up with VSS, Microsoft's Volume Shadow Services. But if you've tried that, it can cause some problems with your Veeam backups because when Veeam backup momentarily pauses or attempts to quiesce the vCenter file system with VSS, you'll run into problems with your Veeam backups. Now, of course, you could back up vCenter without VSS and you would have a crash consistent backup of the vCenter server, which may come up just fine, but VSS is a better way to do it. All right, so that's the problem. Now here's the solution that I'm proposing and it's also a solution that Kendrick Coleman over at his blog created a blog post about and that is to add the ESX or ESXi server that the vCenter server is running on to Veeam Backup directly as a new host or a new server for Veeam Backup to see. Then you create a backup job and you select the vStorage API in network mode and you say that you want to back up the vCenter virtual machine that's running underneath the newly added ESX server and you specify that you want to use VSS. So this way the Veeam Backup server is accessing the vCenter virtual machine through the ESX host directly and not through the vCenter server. This is going to allow you to use VSS and it's going to prevent any problems in your backups. But there could be some other issues with vMotion and DRS or the distributed resource scheduler related to vCenter. So let's say that you have a DRS and HA cluster or it could just be a DRS cluster and you've got the vCenter virtual machine running in that DRS cluster. So I just suggested that you create a backup job pointing to a particular ESX server. But what if that vCenter server moves off that ESX server because DRS is trying to balance the load? Well, the solution is to set the vCenter virtual machine as disabled in your DRS automation rules. And this will keep the virtual machine on the host that it's currently on and allow you to use VSS. Now I'm not saying that there aren't some downsides to this because now I'm saying that the vCenter virtual machine is taken out of the DRS, it's taken out of load balancing, it's taken out of that cluster. So the load isn't going to be balanced when it comes to the vCenter server. And another alternative, of course, if you're willing to spend some money, is to use VMware's vCenter server heartbeat, which is a product that really mirrors to vCenter servers and makes sure that they're up at all times. This would be a solution that VMware, I'm sure, would recommend. So at this point, let me show you how to create this special backup job for vCenter and then how to take the vCenter virtual machine and set it as disabled in the DRS automation rules. All right, here in the vSphere client, notice that I have the vCenter virtual machine highlighted and that it's on ESX server number one and that it's stored in a data store called storage one. Let's also get the IP address of ESX server number one. If we click on that, And then we go into configuration and to network adapters. Here's the service console IP address right here, 10.0.1.11. And we'll need that to add this ESX server by IP address because it's already added by name because the Veeam console connected to the vCenter server and learned about this ESX server by name. So it won't let us add it by name again, so we'll have to add it by IP address. So we have all the information that we need here, and let's go over to the Veeam Backup Console. All right, so here in the Veeam Backup Console, what we're first going to do is to add the server, add ESX server number one by IP address. So I'll click Add Server. I'll type in the IP address. 
and we'll select that this is going to be an ESX or ESXi host. I'll say next here. We'll type in the root credentials for that server. We'll say next. We'll use the Service Console connection to connect to the server, but by default root cannot log in using SSH to the console. So I've set up an account called ddavis. I'll type in the password for that. We'll say we want to elevate that account to root and add the account to the sudoer files automatically. I'll put in the root password there and say next. We'll go ahead and check to connect when we're finished and click finish. There we go. So we successfully connected to ESX server number one via IP address. Veeam knows about that server now. And now what we want to do is to add a new backup job. I'll click the backup icon on the toolbar. And we'll call this job vCenter backup direct to server with VSS. I'll say next here. And here we want to use the VMware vStorage API still because it's the most efficient. But we'll go down and we'll select the network backup mode. And that way we'll be connecting to that server over the LAN. I'll say next here. We'll add the virtual machines we want to back up. And we want to select the vCenter server directly through this IP address here through the ESX host. Let's go down. We'll select vCenter here. And notice that it's underneath the server ESX1 via IP address. I'll say add. We'll say next here. Let's store it in the same backup repository we've been using and it'll have a new file name or new backup job name. Let's double check the advanced options. We'll get an email. We'll use compression. We'll use change block tracking or attempt to use it. We'll say next here. And now we'll choose to enable Veeam VSS integration to ensure that we get a transactionally consistent database backup of the vCenter virtual machine with the SQL Express database located on it. I'm not going to check to continue the backup if VSS quiescence fails because I want to make sure that I get a VSS backup of the vCenter server. So I'll enter the VSS agent credentials here which in our case is going to be the local administrator account. We'll say next here and we'll go ahead and run this job automatically. Let's go ahead and run it every day and let's run it at 3 o'clock a.m. I'll say create. We'll check here to run the job when we're finished. And I'll say finish now. That takes us to the job queue and you can see here the vCenter backup job is just now starting. Let's double click it and we can monitor the progress. I'm sure this will take a few minutes so what I'm going to do is to pause the video and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and our backup job has completed successfully. You see the last result up here, success. If we double click this, we actually ran our full backup. If we click the previous session here, here's the full backup that we performed. It was a success as well. It ran for six hours and 38 minutes. It used NBD with change block tracking and a processing rate of four megabytes per second. Then later, since we set this up as an automated job, at three o'clock in the morning, another backup job kicked off and it backed up this virtual machine again but this time the backup only took 11 minutes because not very many files had changed on the vCenter server in that time. So we successfully ran two backups since we last checked on this backup job and we can also go over to our email and check out the status with a little bit more detail. So over here in our email client again you see the same results with a little bit more detail in a different format. First we have the initial backup job here that kicked off last night at 9.03 you can see it backed up a 100 gig virtual machine. It was the vCenter server and it took six hours. Again, we did the incremental after that at three o'clock in the morning. The processing rate was much faster and it only took 11 minutes. So with the success of this backup job backing up our vCenter virtual machine direct to the ESX server using VSS, we have one last issue and that is the DRS clustering issue that I brought up back in our slides. Because we mapped this backup job directly to the IP address of the ESX server, if the virtual machine were to move to another ESX server, of course, this backup job would break. And DRS clustering might be the thing that would move that virtual machine to another ESX host. So to resolve this, what we need to do is to set the automation level to disabled for this virtual machine in the DRS configuration. And we'll do that over in the vSphere client. 
And in the vSphere client, we'll select our HADRS cluster. We'll right click on that and go down to Edit Settings. And then here, if we go to Virtual Machine Options, we don't want to go to Rules, we want to go to Virtual Machine Options. Because under Virtual Machine Options, this is where you can manually set the automation level for a virtual machine. Of course, you have to have this checkbox checked up here to enable individual virtual machine automation levels. You can find the vCenter server right here. We can do the drop down here and set the automation level to disabled. That way it won't provide any recommendations at all. It'll just keep vCenter right on the ESX server that it's on. I'll say OK there. And at this point, all of our problems should be solved. We've got a backup job that maps directly to the ESX server with the vCenter virtual machine on it. We're using the network backup mode. We're using VSS. It is mandatory so that our backup job will have application and transactional integrity. And then finally, since we're using vSphere's DRS clustering, we set the vCenter server automation level to disabled. So with that, let's go back to our slides. And let's summarize what we learned in this video. We started off with the problem, why vCenter requires a special backup with VSS. That's because when VSS is activated, that virtual machine is going to seemingly freeze for a few seconds while the file systems and data on that virtual machine are backed up. But this is a problem for the Veeam Backup Console because it's using vCenter to know about what's in the virtual infrastructure. So the solution for this is to create a special backup job for vCenter. And that's exactly what we did. We mapped it directly to the IP address of an ESX server. We mandated that we must use VSS. We're using the network mode transport. We ran that job successfully. We did a full initial backup. And then the incremental that ran later only took a few minutes. And then finally, if you're using a DRS cluster, and you're running vCenter as a virtual machine, you need to go in and set the automation level in DRS to disable to prevent that virtual machine from moving to another ESX server and thus breaking your backup job. Thanks for watching this video covering backing up vCenter with Veeam Backup and VSS.